I'll uh, start by expanding what NASO stands for. NASO is the Netherlands Education Support Office, which has been set up by NUFIC, which is our head organization. We are here to promote Dutch higher education throughout India. We have two offices, one located in Ahmedabad, where I uh, head the office, and I have a colleague who sits in Chennai. We do online promotions. Uh, we uh, have a Facebook page where we also interact with the students. Um, and we try to uh, do presentation at the universities directly, so we have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship with the students. So we do study in Holland presentations at uh, universities where we can get contacts, and they invite us to do the presentations. This is all for master's programs. We are presently trying to get in touch with uh, IB schools as well as uh, other uh, higher secondary schools where we provide information to the students as well. So these are the three modes that we use. The Netherlands does offer uh, quite a bit of um, higher education in uh, um, water management, which is one of the fields which uh, is very popular. Engineering and technology has been uh, a very popular uh, for uh, selection uh, by most of the students in India. Uh, the students feel that uh, they do get a very overall uh, international exposure when they go to the Netherlands. I think that is what attracts them the most. Uh, many of the students haven't heard of the Netherlands, which has been difficult for us to put across as well. For South Asian students, uh, I think it is a good, uh, good uh, destination because uh, the Netherlands has uh, more than 190 different communities residing in the country. So they're very open and receptive to outsiders. And I think the Asian community uh, are very close-knit and sometimes they feel that uh, they want to be in a country where they're already Asians existent. Uh, the Chinese have been sending students to the Netherlands for almost the past 15 years. So we have a huge Chinese community there. And uh, the Hindu community is strong because the Dutch have, uh, the Netherlands has uh, adopted the Surinamis. The Surinamis have become a part. So they're all Dutch citizens, but they're Hindus. So they have, we have a huge Hindu uh, standing and they all still follow the Hindu religion. Um, I, I myself went to this one uh, small cafe in a remote little town and I enter the cafe and right in the entry there's a Ganpati. And I'm like, oh wow. <laughs> and it was run by a Dutch person. I asked and they said, no, but it was a Suriname person. So he had put uh, Hindu idols throughout the cafe, which I find very uh, intriguing. And it's good for the Indian students to know. We have come to the conclusion that Germany and Netherlands are the two countries which have actually contributed to stabilizing the recession in Europe as opposed to the other countries because their planning has been so intense that it hasn't affected them as much. Um, I, I'm not saying that it hasn't affected at all, but the job prospects are there. As long as they find the pre uh, precise skill in you, they will adopt you. And we also have the opportunity for the student to take a one-year extension on their student visa after they've completed their program to give them the opportunity to apply. And the other thing is that since you're holding a Schengen visa, they don't have to be restricted only to the Netherlands. They can apply to the neighboring countries as well because they're holding a visa to travel throughout. It is pretty equivalent. Uh, uh, the thing is that, see, when you're holding uh, the MVV is the visa which they're holding when they're studying. During that time, you're allowed only 10 hours of work per week. Once you go into this extendable, searchable period, which is one year after your graduation, you're allowed to work as many as hours as you want. So many of the students that are there right now, they opt for this one year extension. They do around eight to nine hours a day work and the rest of the time they spend in working on their CV, finding the right contacts and developing uh, you know, interviews or whatever. So they find this a very, uh, this thing, if you're allowed to work as many as hours as you want, you can actually work enough to substantially live there right. and then uh, try to apply. And many of the students who've graduated actually during their uh, school time have already tied up with some, uh, uh, with where they've done their internship and those are the people that actually take them on on a temporary basis while they're searching for better jobs. 
So that, that's, I think, a, pl a plus point for the students. It does. I, like I said, when I uh, explored the, the, the certain fields, these fields, we are the best in the world. The main fields, of course, anything and everything that has to do with water, anything and everything that has to do with wind, so that comes sustainable energy and all the whole uh, Shing Majan that goes with it. Uh, agriculture is another. Dairy, everything that has to do with dairy, because we're also uh, innovative in that. And uh, law seems to be taking up this, uh, I've seen in the past uh, two years, because it is also the center of the UN. And so law is one of the uh, uh, courses which are, and social sciences. The main language is Dutch, but throughout the country, uh, everybody speaks English. The younger generation all have studied English in their schooling. All the programs that we offer, 1,500 plus programs, are all taught in English. So you have to have a certain level of English to be able to even apply for the, uh, the program. So um, I think it's not difficult for an, uh, an Asian student to go there and reside without even knowing a word of Dutch. But I, I think it's, it's just cordial if you're going to a country to learn basic things like please, thank you, and most of our students do.